Hey guys, welcome back to the laboratory. In this video, we are looking at balancing chemical equations. By the end of this video, you should be able to recall the law of conservation of mass, explain why chemical equations must be balanced, and correctly balance chemical equations. So, let's go. The law of conservation of mass is used in science to explain the conservation of matter. This law states that matter cannot be created or destroyed, and can only be transferred from one place to the next. In chemistry, this means that the mass of the reactants in a chemical reaction must always equal the mass of the products. In some reactions, the mass of the products may appear to increase or decrease. The key word here is appear, as the matter that appears to have been lost or gained can always be accounted for. For example, when zinc is heated in air, zinc oxide is produced. The mass of zinc oxide produced will be more than the mass of zinc that has reacted, and so the products of the reaction will appear to have increased in mass. However, when the zinc was heated in air, it would have reacted with oxygen gas. Because the oxygen has not been measured or accounted for, it would seem the reaction has gained mass. Despite this, the law of conservation of mass tells us that the mass of the zinc and oxygen that reacted would be the same as the mass of zinc oxide produced. In contrast, when a gas is formed as a result of a chemical reaction, the mass of the reaction may appear to decrease. For example, when lithium reacts with water, the products of the reaction are lithium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. Because the hydrogen gas will escape into the air, the mass of the products will appear to have decreased. However, the law of conservation of mass tells us that the mass of the lithium and water that have reacted is the same as the mass of the lithium hydroxide and hydrogen that are produced. As a result of the law of conservation of mass, we must balance chemical equations to show that the quantity of reactants and products in a chemical reaction are the same. To successfully balance a chemical equation, there must be an equal number of an element's atoms in the reactants and in the products of the reaction. When balancing equations, there are two very important rules that must be exercised consistently. Firstly, the subscript numbers in the formula for a substance must not be changed. If these subscript numbers are changed, the substance itself will change too. Instead, you must use balancing numbers. These numbers are always placed in front of the substance and must be whole numbers only. Let's take a look at this concept in practice. In a chemical reaction, hydrogen and oxygen react to make water. The symbol equation for this reaction would look like this. In the reactants, we have two atoms of hydrogen and two atoms of oxygen. However, in the products, we have two atoms of hydrogen and only one atom of oxygen. This equation does not follow the law of conservation of mass, as there are less oxygen atoms in the products than there are in the reactants. To successfully balance this equation, we need to have the same number of hydrogen and oxygen atoms at both ends of the reaction. We cannot change the subscript numbers to achieve this, so we must use balancing numbers instead. We can start by placing a number 2 before the water in the products. Placing this balancing number now means we have two water molecules, therefore we now have four hydrogen atoms and two oxygen atoms in our products. Placing this 2 now balances the oxygen atoms in the reaction but we now have an imbalance in our hydrogen atoms. To rectify this, we must now place a 2 before the hydrogen in the reactants. This balancing number now means we have two molecules of hydrogen gas, therefore we now have four hydrogen atoms on this side of the reaction too. Voila! Our equation is now balanced. Let's take a look at one more example. In this reaction, nitrogen and hydrogen gas react to form ammonia. In the reactants, we have two nitrogen atoms and two hydrogen atoms, and in the products, we have one nitrogen atom and three hydrogen atoms. This equation is not balanced. We can start by balancing the nitrogen atoms. There are two nitrogen atoms in the reactants and only one nitrogen atom in the products. If we place a 2 before the ammonia, we now have two molecules of ammonia in the products. This also means we now have two atoms of nitrogen and six atoms of hydrogen. The nitrogen atoms in this reaction are now balanced. However, we now have six hydrogen atoms in the products and only two in the reactants. 
If we place the number 3 before the hydrogen in the reactant, we now have 3 molecules of hydrogen gas, and therefore 6 atoms of hydrogen. This equation is now balanced. Here's a quick task you can attempt to test your understanding of this concept. Pause the video and take your time to work it through. Press play once you're ready to check your answers. Let's talk through the answer to this second question. In this reaction, phosphorus reacts with oxygen to form phosphorus oxide. This reaction is unbalanced and so we can start by adding a 2 before the phosphorus oxide in the products. There are now 2 molecules of phosphorus oxide, meaning there are now 4 atoms of phosphorus and 6 atoms of oxygen in the products. The number of phosphorus atoms in the reactant and the products is now balanced. However, there are more oxygen atoms in the products than there are in the reactants. To balance this, we can add the number 3 before the oxygen in the reactants. There are now 3 molecules of oxygen in the reactants, and so there are now 6 oxygen atoms in the reactants too. This equation is now balanced. Here are the answers to the other questions. How did you do? Let me know in the comment section below. Anyway, that's it for this video guys. Thank you for joining me in the laboratory. Please leave a like on this video if you found it useful, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss another one. See you soon!